Platformers come in all shapes and sizes. Some are super controllable, some are super strict. Some use interesting mechanics that you make videos about to justify your current indie game using. Hey, I'm Stolkin of Mighty Obstacle Studios, and I wanted to talk to you about the power of adding momentum to a video game, and why I was convinced to not only do it before, but to do it again. First thing, though, what exactly is momentum? To simply explain it, it's physics related to the speed your object is going at. Unless you're in another dimension without gravity and physics, you, the person watching this, deal with momentum daily. The best way I can describe it as a gameplay mechanic is when the character you're playing as conveys a sense of weight to their movement. Much like real life, these characters have a harder time turning around and react to their level design by moving slower or faster depending on the circumstances. It's physics! It's real life! This raises the question of, what does this mean for gameplay, specifically platformers? This is why when a lot of people talk about momentum in gameplay, Sonic the Hedgehog is brought up a lot. While there are quite a few platformers before Sonic that feature weighted platforming, including his rival Mario, Sonic is easily one of the kings of showing momentum off in gameplay. You run down a hill in Sonic, and Sonic moves faster. Okay, in Sonic 1 there's a speed cap while running, but in all others, when you move downhill, you'll make Sonic move faster. Is this 100% accurate to real life? I mean, kind of. Yet it's accurate enough where common sense in the real world would dictate that something like that would happen. What's even wilder is how Sonic was designed to just be a faster Mario, only for the developers to make him run on walls and ceilings to take advantage of his gameplay. You gotta love how innovation works. Momentum at this level is usually something reserved for Sonic in video games. There are some like Marble Blast Ultra, Mirror's Edge, ooh, I, I love this game, and Freedom Planet that also have momentum too with varying degrees of accuracy. However, like I stated earlier, this is not something that you see often. Sure, racing games and simulation games use physics a lot, but why stop there? All kinds of genres can benefit from it, and there's already examples of platformers showing that off. Sonic has some great ideas, yet I feel I do as well. I'm no Yuji Naka, I haven't committed any insider trading recently, but one aspect that was always fun for me was combat. Even in Sonic games, usually momentum is killed when you're moving fast and trying to attack an enemy. Sonic's signature 3D attack option, the homing attack, usually doesn't carry Sonic's momentum forward when bouncing off of enemies. He just goes straight up. This philosophy of ignoring how enemies reacted was originally carried over in my much more Castlevania-inspired first project, Necrolepsy. Lyra here had no momentum to her attacks, and instead you stopped, attacked, and were on your way. The idea came to me that I could also affect how enemies reacted to Lyra's current attacks. Now, what if I made it so that they also carried Lyra's current speed? Well, once I did that, Necrolepsy got a lot better. Changes were made to how Lyra moved in Necrolepsy, including adding some slopes so that you could move faster. The way I did it, though, was really crappy, though. Don't do what I did. At the end of the day, because Lyra takes a bit to turn around and isn't as snappy as people think, Necrolepsy also has some momentum like these games. Not in the sense of running up walls and ceilings, but more in the sense of being able to use your weight to take enemies with you, and being able to fight on the move. While that's carrying over to my current project, we need to take a slight detour first. Before Scouter, I was working on a much larger game because I had the time for it, Draco Blood. Draco Blood also had momentum, and was 3D. My vector math skills were going wild, and it was really sick to experiment with it. Azalea here could kick enemies and smack them around and give them a very realistic feeling of getting clobbered by a dragon girl that could break your spine with a single kick. The momentum in this game was making sure the characters and enemies reacted to their environments properly. Damn, I really want to work on this game. So if you want me to have the time, make sure you start donating to the Patreon, and I'll cover more about that later. Which finally leads to Scouter. As I said in the Necrolepsy section, carrying your enemies is cool. Necrolepsy could have used some more speed to help make it stand out and be with its contemporaries. Well, that's what Scouter is. It's taking what Necrolepsy had and building off of it. Scout here is able to run up walls and ceilings just fine, and her combat system is Necrolepsy's on steroids. You could honestly say Scouter is carrying on the momentum that Necrolepsy brought to the table. How poetic. That's why there's a lot of magic in just really basic physics stuff like this. 
I have a character that can run on walls and ceilings and fight enemies who can be carried by said character. It turns into something very, very magical. This transfers to somewhat more unrealistic mechanics, like how she can bounce up a little when juggling enemies in the air. Is it accurate? Nope. But guess what? It's fun. So why don't more games use this? Momentum gameplay seems really cool, and it adds a lot to a game. Boy, you're not gonna believe this. It turns out physics like this is hard to code, even harder to get right. It also gets even harder when you add 3D to the mix. Momentum physics for gameplay requires a lot of knowledge of trigonometry and vector math to even begin to understand how it works. You can't just throw sines and cosines in code and expect it to all be well. well okay, in some parts you can. 3D is even tougher, because that's vector math, character rotations, and an input detection system you need to sit down and understand spatially. Physics simulations like that are considered one of the hardest things to code for a game. So if you want to make a momentum-based platformer, you're going to have to be realistic and not make it your first project, unless you have a LOT of experience under your belt. The other aspect is that it can tank performance. Why do you think Sonic waited until the Dreamcast to have his first true 3D adventure? Sure, you may point to Sonic Jam or R, but those games played nothing like Sonic Adventure ended up as. Performing all kinds of vector math with this guy running through all these insanely large levels, well guess what? It can tank performance, even on the original hardware, which also leads to the point of optimization. It's definitely better now with consoles averaging many giga shits per terafart, but you need to be aware that with a character moving this quickly, a game can really chug. I know Spark the Electric Jester 3 had some issues getting ported to Nintendo Switch, so there's more than just Sonic games to see why this is something to keep an eye on. Oh, also, this is something I'm learning now. You have to make very large levels. This can correlate with performance, because not only do you have to have this fast thing running everywhere, now you also need a large world for them to traverse through. You can turn models and collision on and off to help with optimization. And by can, I mean strictly necessary for you to do that. If you don't know how to optimize games well, here's where making these kind of games can be tricky. Sonic Adventure did this great by making levels split in half, or creatively making levels that Sonic has to zigzag around. Sonic Adventure 2 had something similar, but instead made it so that certain parts of the level would be loaded at a time. Mirror's Edge also did something very similar to this, where Faith would be running into an elevator, and then as the elevator's going up, the level would load quietly in the background, and then you'd go and continue from there. Yeah, unfortunately, stages like this can be really big. So even if you're not deterred by now, because honestly, this should be pushing like 90% of you guys away from making games like this. If you're not, you may be wondering if there's other resources that you can look at besides a video like this. Luckily, Sonic fans are crazy passionate and always have a lot of resources when trying to mimic its gameplay. The first resource I'd recommend for making it easier to understand in 2D is the Sonic Physics Guide on Sonic Retro. There's pseudocode, pictures, and very well explained details on everything from Sonic sensors to objects in Sonic games. However, some basic programming knowledge I feel is required to read it. Otherwise, the information will get stored in your head like this. With 3D games, though, that's a bit trickier. Luckily, a lot of Sonic fans also have frameworks that you can check out if you want to build something off of their work. The one I know for sure that has been used in commercial projects is Hedge Physics, a Unity-based framework that was created by Lake Feppard and Demisian. Demi Demisian? Demisian? Regardless, they made that for the Spark the Electric Jester series. This framework has a few difficult things to understand in it, I can definitely say that you might get a little confused when you see the handle ground controls function. But everything else is well put together and it was a great resource when I was making code for Draco Blood and Scouter. It's kind of funny the way they keep Sonic glued to the ground in this involves just pushing him down into the ground more. I mean, hey, whatever works, right? Thank you for watching this video to the end. Though I usually don't make content like this as a video game developer channel, I thought it would be fun to give it a try and see how people like it. If you enjoyed this, you can help support our game development endeavors by checking out our Patreon and doing the usual YouTube routine of subbing and liking. We'll have new videos posted every month for our next project, Scouter, so keep an eye on what we plan to show off. But sit down and give it a thought. Do you think momentum could benefit other video game genres? 
I think some RPGs would get interesting with live physics calculations, but that's just me. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Stolkin, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.